I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody round on this! Oh my god! Uh, welcome to the All Things Rangers Bar Talk, where we are gauging our confidence based on our choice of drink on all these NHL topics. Because this is also big news today, that Ryan Nugent Hopkins' deal is a signal of the flat cap era effects. And Phil, you suggested it, so you start off. Yeah, that's a round for me. Um, I know that he took a little bit of a discount to stay, but... The six, probably seven million that he was looking for, he wasn't going to get in the open market, and I had the feeling that him and his agent both knew that. So um, I'm absolutely buying everybody around on. I think it's going to hurt someone like Philip Deneau, who is not having a great postseason offensively, zero goals, three points so far, um, and he he was looking. Actually, he turned down a deal from Montreal. That was uh, six years and thirty million, so five million a year. He ain't getting that anymore. Definitely not after this, and definitely not after his postseason. What does that say for Casey Zizekas, who was looking a rate for a raise, three point three five million, I believe it is, Anthony. Yeah, three point yeah, three five. Yeah. So, yeah, what does that say for someone like him? Honestly, and you know what? There's going to be a lot of guys. I think you're going to see like someone like Tom Tomas Tatar who was almost a point per game last year for Montreal, he's going to probably end up having a discount, too. I think there are a lot of guys that are really going to be adversely affected by them. Barry normally would have been in for a big payday. He'll probably get less because he's really a puck mover, not really good in the zone. Dougie Hamilton might even have to take less at this point. And they were talking about him getting between 8 and $9 million a year. So, uh, yeah, I'm buying everybody around on that. Anthony. I was going to go round, but then but then I thought about it and I switched to beer. And I, I say that only because yeah, Nugent Hopkins was making $6 million on his previous deal. Now he's making five, But that was because he wanted to stay with the Oilers. I think if he would have tested free agent at the very least, he would have been able to get $6 million again, which would have been the same as he was making. So I think a team out there would have gave him six. So while there are a lot of teams that are cap-strapped, and he certainly wouldn't have got a raise, but I think he still could have at least maintained his current rate if he hit free agency. But kudos to him. He was a loyal guy. He played his whole career there. He said he, you know, he said, um, well, not him himself, but Rashog and some of the other guys who covered the Oilers said he did it because he wanted to remain a Oiler for the rest of his career, and that's what he valued. So he agreed to take $5 million. Um, but like John says, that does affect guys like Sezikis. And, you know, even though I said before, I, I do think right now I'm leaning towards Sezikis leaving at the same time. Maybe if Sezikis really enjoys being an Islander, like Matt Martin says, then maybe, then maybe he, then maybe he takes a million less to stay with the Islanders. You know, so it really all depends what the guy's value. If a guy, if a guy's loyal and he truly loves it, maybe you do it. But some guys, some guys don't care and they just want to make as much money as possible. So, I mean, we'll see. But uh, I do think it's kudos to Ryan Newton Hopkins for doing that because I do think he could have at least maintained his salary. Um, that's like any of us leaving our job. We make. Seventy thousand dollars a year, and we leave our job, um, and we take the same amount at the other job, which rarely happens. Usually, when you move to another job, you get a raise. But that's essentially what Nugent Hopkins did. He he took the same amount of money to stay where he is. So, but um, but when know, they show you that that the flat cap is affecting the market, because well, you're not going to get the raise, and you're just going to get the same amount of money. You, you're it, it's kind of strapping everybody. Then, yeah, you? I, I mean, yeah, that's true. Um, but I mean, I do, I do think he could have, he didn't have to take a pay cut. I think he could have maintained his salary if he, if he would have went to free agency. But again, you know, for him, I guess money isn't everything. And, um, you know, kudos to the Oilers for getting him signed though. So, but yeah, I, I flip flopped on this one, but I, I didn't go either way, but I guess I'll, I guess I'll stick with beer. Uh, I'm going to, I'm actually going to stick with beer on this one, even though it could easily be around. Uh, I think it's, it is, I'll put this one on the player wanting to stay i have no idea why um yeah uh, we talked about Connor mcdavid's only won one playoff series more than uh jack eichel and uh yeah that's ryan Nugent hopkins has four more years on him on that so why would you want to stay why would you want to leave you could have he could have easily have tested the market and pushed teams like uh the rangers who are possibly in the market for a center um 
or I'm trying to, it's every team needs a center and they can always use a guy to be a number two center. And that's how you end up just pushing that. Um, <laughs> yeah, Chris, absolutely. I was, I was kind of going to block myself in Arkham during a 2014 as well. well. You, Chris, Chris, you should have saw me after the game. I wasn't, I certainly wasn't fine. But my wife, finishing, like, my wife was like, "How come you didn't come to bed for like an hour after they lost?" And I'm like, uh, "I'm like honestly, I was I was decompressing and and wallowing in my own sorrows." <laughs> in in our Q and A session, I'm gonna come back to this one because I'm gonna have a question for you guys on that. But um, again, with with Newton Hopkins, he could have pushed the market, gotten a better contract. Instead, he decided I'm gonna stay. Good for him. Good of being a team guy. But I think that's going to affect the market, too. Uh, now everybody's going to look over and go, that's the deal. That was the new deal that was just signed. That's what you have to go with. And it's another reason why you got to be wary about trading for a Jack Eichel because he's already got the market, the, the contract for one. His money, it, the contracts were exploding. So that's how you screw up your cap by going to, if they're bad contracts. So for one thing, I guess good for you, Tompkins. What's that? What's that called? Dominoes. Yeah. They're dominoes. I'm honestly excited, kind of surprised the Oilers gave him eight years, too. I mean, I I thought that, uh, you know, he's... <laughs> yeah, <why? laughs> uh, yeah if I, I, think, I think if I did that, I, I would have been sleeping in this chair where I'm sitting right now. Yeah. Oh, Tony. Tony, I would have killed you. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, all right. We're going to move on from there. And because this one pertains to that Nugent Hopkins deal and the lack of free agency. The trade market will be more important than the free agent market. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to buy everybody around on this one because the two top names that are there are Jack Eichel and, and Seth Jones. That's going to change around. That could change around the, their tectonic plates. That, that, could, that could do everything. As much as I'm wary about trading around Jack Eichel, God only knows if Jack Eichel is healthy, then he's going to go to a team, boom, they're instant contenders. So, uh, and Seth Jones might be a missing piece for, say, like at the Toronto Maple Leafs or somebody. <laughs> I know, but Toronto still ain't going to win a playoff series. Oh, snap! Um, <laughs> that it's just, it's, it, it, that's what's going to be. It's going to be the trade market and moving around, guys. Anthony. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go around because I think, I think the trade market is going to affect free agency and vice versa. I think, there are a lot of teams, well, and I think, I, there, I know there are a lot of teams that are in the same boat, not much cap space. So I think there are going to be teams that want to sign a player in free agency, but they're not going to be able to do it unless they make a trade to free up the room. So I think the trade market's going to be really big, especially with Seattle coming into the league. Um, I think a lot of teams are going to utilize Seattle as a way to pawn off contracts they don't want, and Seattle's going to reap the benefits of it because they're going to get good assets to take back a couple of players they normally wouldn't. So... Um, yeah, I honestly think this is interesting to be a, a very active trade season just because, again, teams are going to have to move pieces around to try to free up some space. And, um, you know, you mentioned Dougie Hamilton. There could be teams like, you know, the Flyers who want Hamilton, but, you know, they need to make some moves before they can sign him. So, um, yeah, for me, I, I definitely think it's going to be big on this. So I'm, I'm going to go around for sure. By the way, Sean, everybody has to inquire about the injury. <laughs> you you better get full like examination. Silk. Well, I'll, I'll start with going into Sean's comment there. Brooks actually wrote that um, they're inquiring about the injury, but they're not giving the medical records to any team that isn't in some sort of serious stage of negotiating. Fair, but I, I think any team that wants to get serious is going to want to see those before they start getting real serious. So I think Kevin Adams better start, you know, giving some more information out to the other GMs of the league if he really wants to get a deal done, especially before the draft, which I believe he does because, like in the past, he wants to have that pick to make his own pick to let his scouting staff take a player instead of taking a prospect drafted by another team. So um, that's number one there. Number two, I'm I'm buying rounds for everybody. Uh, uh, Alexa, play beer by Real Big Fish because I'm buying rounds here for everybody. Yeah, do a little, little 90 Scott for a back here. Hey, hey, you're talking about Eichel. Everybody's kicking the tires on Eichel. I mean, a lot of teams actually seriously interested in 
are going to go elsewhere while they realize where he ends up. Teams are going to have to make here. Did you guys hear me there? Yeah, I heard. I heard you. Yeah, uh, you were a little bit choppy, but I heard you at the end. Yeah, all three squeaks black on me, so it was. Uh, but I mean, teams that are making inquiries on Eichel are going to need to make space. And then, you know, obviously for Seth Jones, same thing. A lot of teams are going to be under him. I know the Flyers are one of the teams that have linked. Um, probably the most notably team to uh, Seth Jones at this point. But, you know, Dougie Hamilton. Then, you know, once Seth Jones' situation gets figured out, then teams can switch focus to Dougie Hamilton. And, you know, Anthony mentioned before. They may not get those same Vegas trades, that, you know, like the Florida trades where they stupidly gave up March or so and Smith to protect mm -hmm. Alex Petrovich. But the Adels going to take advantage of their cap space and they are going to get assets. So that's going to spruce things up. Trade market is going to be the, the, the center of everything, especially in a flat cap world, because that's why I brought that, that thing up about Ryan Nugent. Up. Because in the flat, in, in a normal salary cap free agent frenzy, teams are overpaying players left and right. Whether it's by 500k, million, two million, whatever the case may be, free agency, you know, players get overpaid. Players are not going to get overpaid this offseason. The teams just don't have the the capability or the wherewithal to do it. So now the trade market becomes more important than ever, and there's more focus on it. And you have less of a free agent pool than you had in previous years. What really interests me, though, is what's going to happen with Gabriel Landeskog in Colorado. That, to me, I think is going to take up a lot of the free agent focus this offseason. So I'm and, on this. And I also asked this question, and the NHL's active goal-scoring leader is technically a free agent. There's no way Ovechkin leaves, right? I, 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 think, stop. I, think, I, know. Uh, I ah. think that's because they're just – because if they sign him now, they have to protect them. So by leaving him unsigned – that enables them to have another spot to protect. Yeah, and they got rid of that rule of that if Seattle then picked them, yeah, because they know they can get that take, compensation. They know Seattle's not going to take Ovechkin. If he did, that'd be dumb. He's going to say, "Okay, well, thanks for picking me, but I'm not siding with you, and you just wasted your pick on me." So, yeah, it's a no-brainer. I wouldn't be surprised if they already have a verbal agreement to to whatever. Mike so, Richter, 1998 expansion draft pick by Nashville. Said, nope, I'm going back to New York. Yep. Same thing. And uh, I think there was there was another guy that was in there that, that in that expansion draft that did the same thing besides him. All right. But obviously we want to know about you think we were fired up about the Montreal uh, expanding the playoff segment because, again, I, I think it's ridiculous. Um, but uh, put it in the comments below. Uh, do you think that Kucherov should win the Conn Smythe? Do you think the Islanders are going to lose a key player? Kako Kako not playing with Panarin because he doesn't want him to be? I don't know. I don't like that one either. Um, actually, you know what? Um, before we completely close out this segment, I, I got to circle back. We were talking about the flat cap. Uh, Phil, what do you think that's going to affect on Mika Zibanejad? I think Mika's slow start this season hurts him. Uh, I, I would say... It, Looking at what's been going on with contracts, especially new to Hopkins, how he took that discount. I always said that if Mika Zibanejad got a contract for free agency, he didn't have the season that he had. Started off, played like he did in 2020. Uh, I, I would say that he was looking for somewhere between 9 and $10 million. But, I mean, if he wants to stay in New York and he wants to take this kind, he wants to be a part of this team, like Nugent Hopkins, wink, wink. Mika, mm -hmm. you might be looking at eight million or less for him. And if you can get him for eight million or less, that enables you to bring in another center like an Eichel or someone else that's closer to that eight million dollar range who's a better player than Ryan Strong. You can find someone like that. So I, I would I would say Mika's advantage at this this is gonna affect him too because the, the, the cap's not going up after this season either. It's gonna take yeah. a bit. Yeah, that's not that's not gonna happen. So we are we obviously want to know what you think. Put it down in the comments below. Sorry that I'm not camera ready, but at least you get to see my Zelda hat. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these.
that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.